The sixth and final wave of the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass has been officially released. And just like the previous five waves, this wave comes with eight new tracks being Tour Romavante, GCN DK Mountain, Wee Daisy Circuit, Piranha Plant Cove, Tour Madrid Drive, 3DS Rosalina's Ice World, SNES Bowser Castle 3, and Wii Rainbow Road. Additionally, this wave also introduced four new playable characters being Diddy Kong, Funky Kong, Pauline, and Peachette. And if that wasn't enough, it's also included 18 new Mii Racing suits, most notably the Daisy Mii Racing suit that can be unlocked by scanning a Daisy Amiibo, regardless if you have the DLC or not. I've had a blast playing through these amazing newly added tracks. So just like I did for Wave 5, I've decided to create this video ranking my opinions of the Wave 6 racetracks. Before we get started, please note that these rankings are based solely on my opinion and experiences. I want to preface that I don't think any of the new tracks are bad by any means. Wave 6 is undoubtedly the best wave in the Booster Course Pass. It's just that when it comes to ranking, something has to be at the bottom. So if you feel differently about how I rank the tracks, or if you agree with me, let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe, as we are currently on the path to 3,000 subscribers. Your support and kind words is honestly what makes me love creating content. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's rank them up. This may be a bit of a shock, but I'm placing Piranha Plant Cove at the bottom of this list. Serving as the unofficial new track of this wave, Parada Plant Cove takes all three of its variants from Mario Kart Tour and combines them into one large section track. Piranha Plant Cove is set on an archipelago containing underwater ruins with a Piranha Plant motif. Many underwater enemies are featured throughout the course, such as Ma Rays, Cheep Cheeps, Jelly Beams, and more. The reason I'm placing this track at the bottom is because it just seems very empty to me, almost like something's missing. I really wanted to love this track, as I'm a big fan of the underwater tracks, but after playing it multiple times, I feel like it wouldn't be fair to the other tracks in this wave to place Piranha Plant Cove above them. Am I the only one that feels this way about this track? Let me know in the comments. As much as it pains a Daisy stand to place her track this low on the list, I can't deny that this track is one of the weakest of the bunch. And don't get me wrong, for a circuit track, it's one of the more memorable ones with its unique lighting and setting. However, it's just that, a circuit track. And we have plenty of those already in the game. Based off its appearance from Mario Kart Tour, not much has changed besides a hang gliding ramp at the stairs shortcut, a trick ramp at the end of the tunnel, and dash panels added around the turn with the lighthouse. I wanted to rank this track above the two city tracks from Tour, however they ultimately just offer more variety, so unfortunately, Daisy Circuit sits at the number 7 spot. This has to be the most shocking track added to Wave 6. Rosalina's Ice World is the first 3DS track that's been added to the DLC since Wave 3's Rainbow Road. I know a lot of people aren't a big fan of this track, and I don't understand why. Sure, it may not be the best track in Mario Kart 7, but it certainly wasn't the worst. I love the aesthetic of this track, and the fact that you can see what appears to be the Comet Observatory and the Gateway Galaxy in the background is a nice nod to Mario Galaxy. If you've seen my other Mario Kart related videos, or have come out to one of my weekly Mario Kart 8 Deluxe streams, where I race with viewers, which if you're interested, is every Friday at 7pm Eastern Time, you'll know that I love snow areas in video games. So although some may find this to not be the most exciting track, the fact that it is a snow track does bump it up for me, as stupid as that may sound. Are you enjoying what you're seeing so far? Don't forget to give this video a comment, a like, and subscribe, as we are currently on the path to 3,000 subscribers. Your support to the channel is much appreciated and does not go unnoticed. Anyways, back to the video. The first of two city tracks included in this wave, Romavante brings racers to the streets of Italy at night. Like other Mario Kart Tour city tracks, this iteration of the track combines the course's three routes together into one continuous route that occupies three laps. Numerous landmarks of Rome are seen throughout the track, like the Roman Forum and the Piazza del Campidoglio. Sorry about probably butchering that. Like many, the city theme tracks normally just don't really do it for me, but Romavante is different. When compared to the earlier city tracks added in the DLC, Romavante offers more variety, and the nighttime aesthetic does make it stand out more from the majority of the other city tracks that take place during the day. The only downside is that the layouts of the city tracks can be a little hard to understand, with the confusing arrow markers. And just like that, 
Here's the second city track, Madrid Drive. Once again, being a city track means that this iteration of the track combines the course's three routes together into one continuous route that occupies three laps. Taking place in Spain, the course takes racers through many landmarks of the city, such as the Piorta del Sol and the Piorta de la Cala. Once again, sorry for my horrible pronunciation. You have every right to hit me with the blue shell for that. There's really not too much to say. It's another city track. But the reason I'm placing it above Romavante is due to the cool section where you race through the soccer, or football stadium, while avoiding giant footballs being kicked around by goobas wearing Karibo shoes. It's such a fun part! Also, the music for this track slaps! The acoustic guitars and claps are very reminiscent of traditional Spanish flamenco music. Oh boy, did this track ever get a glow up! The return of SNES Bowser Castle 3 in Mario Kart Tour marked the first time an SNES Bowser Castle had ever been remade, excluding Mario Kart Super Circuit. The track looked and played amazing in Tour, and of course the 8 Deluxe version here retains the visual upgrades from Tour. In 8 Deluxe, however, the track also features anti-gravity, starting from the first jump and continuing up until the end of the slanted section, making it the first SNES course to feature the anti-gravity mechanic. When the prefix datamine came out, and hinted that there would be another SNES track coming, it was heavily implied it would be Bowser Castle 3, due to it being the SNES track and tour that got the biggest visual overhaul. Normally the SNES tracks are some of my least favorite, but this remake really makes Bowser Castle 3 stand out, and almost makes you forget it's based off of a Super Mario Kart track. It's about time Nintendo added this track to the Booster Course Pass! With each passing wave, I was getting more nervous that GCN DK Mountain was going to be left out of the DLC. But now, Nintendo is just trying to teach us some patience by making us wait until the very end of the DLC. DK Mountain is a straight up classic, and is the epitome of a great Mario Kart track. It stays pretty faithful to the original in Mario Kart Double Dash, but of course it's based off its appearance in Mario Kart Tour. A wall now extends along the small part of the final chasm, preventing the shortcut possible there in Double Dash and Wii. It's a shame when they remove shortcuts, but it really doesn't hinder my positive opinions of this track. So if DK Mountain is the epitome of a great Mario Kart track, then what could top this at the number one spot? Well, it's a surprise to no one that Wii Rainbow Road is taking the number one spot on my list. It's no doubt one of the best Rainbow Roads in the entire series, so it made perfect sense to add this as the final track in the DLC. The course is largely based off its appearance from Mario Kart Tour, but with significant visual upgrades and the return of three laps instead of one. The entire track now takes place in anti-gravity, making it one of five tracks to hold this distinction, with the others being Mute City, GCN Baby Park, Big Blue, and Sky High Sunday. I don't think there's anything that disappoints me about this track. The track had been data mined for some time now, so it wasn't that much of a shock to see it announced in the reveal trailer, but it still doesn't make me any less hype, as it's one of the best Mario Kart tracks of all time and is now in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed what you saw here today, be sure to hit the like, smash that subscribe, and ring the bell to get notified when I upload future videos. Once again, I'm Mike Bryce, and I will see you in the next one.